Today, I'm excited to be chatting with Beatrice Reprasier, who's in her first year at the McGill University Law School. Um, and I'm going to be chatting with Beatrice about her experience navigating the law school application process and applying to McGill specifically, and her tips for future applicants who are interested in the program. So my first question for you, Beatrice, is what sparked your interest in the McGill Law School and, and law school more generally as well? Sure. Um, so I guess I'll start with my background. So I studied sociology and anthropology at the University of Ottawa. And because it's a social science field, um, there were a lot of broad topics that were covered, namely like political science and law. So by the time I finished um, my studies, I knew that I had an interest in it, but I wasn't quite sure. So what I decided to do was apply to a paralegal program in Ontario afterwards. Um, and in doing that, I was able to get kind of a basic understanding of how the law functioned and how advocacy works in a courtroom. And I really found it to be uh, the path that I wanted to take. And I decided afterwards to apply to law school. Um, when I started thinking about where I wanted to go to, McGill actually wasn't on my radar just because I was thinking of staying in Ontario. But a couple of things kind of stood out to me as I started doing more research. Um, for one, McGill is a bilingual faculty and it's a dual program. So what that essentially means is that instead of doing just your common law degree, you get both a common law degree and then a civil law degree at the end. And you can practice in both Quebec and the rest of Canada. Um, and it also means that it's a lot easier to take internationally because there's a lot of civil law um, jurisdictions. Um, and the fact that it's bilingual also means that you're using both languages. So I do speak both English and French. I'm a native Anglophone, but I wanted to have the opportunity to work on my French and be able to uh, practice in both official languages. So I would say that those two things were definitely what attracted me. Um, the fact that I would be able to combine both degrees and that I could work on my French at the same time and get exposure to a new province. That's so cool. And what was your application process like? So the application process is um, for those who are familiar with perhaps like the Ontario process, it's very different from that. So with McGill, they have a specific um, portal on the McGill website that you apply to. And what you have to do is you have to fill out um, a CV, which is they give you the format. So you just have to fill in the CV format with your academic experience, work experience, research, um, any type of extracurriculars that you think might be relevant, and that's submitted. You also submit all your transcripts um, for school. So for me, because I did a paralegal program also, I was submitting both my undergrad and my paralegal transcripts. And then finally, you have to submit two references. Um, typically, they don't require but they strongly suggest that they're two academic references because the program is so academically rigorous um, they usually don't want to see professional references unless you can make a really good case as to why that would make you a good law student um, so that was essentially what i had i had uh, the the cv the two reference letters and then my transcripts um, and because I wrote the LSAT, I also had to submit that as well. What they do at McGill is they take the cumulative of your LSAT scores. Um, so I wrote it three times, they got the cumulative, but they do see all three as well. So they can use that in a holistic analysis of your file. And what do you think maybe made you stand out in your applications? Um, so I think there's a couple of things that made me stand out. Um, specifically at McGill, what they look for is someone who for one demonstrates a kind of um, academic curiosity. So people who take classes in lots of different uh, fields or who may have involved themselves in research projects or comparative courses um, or anything like that where you really have to um, test your academic um, knowledge, I guess, and, and work it further than a regular class. Um, that's something that they find interesting. I did also have um, international research courses in New Orleans, and then I also had uh, participation in the um, National Enman, or sorry, the uh, Model UN competition in New York. So I think all of those things kind of show that I clearly had an interest in lots of different areas of law. I was getting out there and I was doing lots of things with my degree, and I wasn't really sticking to just my coursework. 
Um, another thing that stood out is my varied extracurriculars. I think like most law schools, they do want to see that you're doing stuff outside of school as well, even with the research projects and everything. Uh, they do like to see work experience, um, volunteer experience, anything that kind of shows your leadership in the community. And particular things that I had was I uh, was involved with organizing a fashion show in Ottawa for about five years. Um, I also was involved in a lot of professional organizations like the Ontario Paralegal Association um, and the YMCA, just a lot of things that showed that I was doing a lot with my time. And I think those really helped me stand out as well as my academics. Awesome. Is there anything that you maybe wish you knew when you started this process? I think one thing I wish I knew was to really get most of my documentation and reference letters done way ahead of time. Um, so the application period begins in September and you have up until November. So it's two months, which is still plenty of time. But because life is happening at the same time and people might have um, other commitments, it's easy to lose track of all the moving parts because especially with the McGill process, you're actually doing uh, about, sorry about that. <laughs> you're doing about um, two different submissions. So you have to submit first just to get your file opened up with McGill and then you have to submit a second time. And then for your reference letters, you have um, people submitting it completely independently from you. So there's a lot of things you don't always have control over. And if you're not keeping track of what needs to be um, done and who you have as your reference letter, it can be very stressful in the week uh, before your application is due. I think I got everything in on time, but it was definitely stressful just for those last few things that I had to like triple check to make sure before submitting. I think it will be great for, for the viewers that are interested in applying to have this knowledge in advance going into the process. So I'm curious about if there were any supplementary or I'm, I suspect maybe a personal statement component to the application. And based on your experiences, um, how did you like, how did you navigate that? What tips do you have for that aspect of the application for future applicants? Sure. Um, so for McGill, I should have mentioned that there is, yes, a statement letter. Um, one thing that I found difficult specifically with the McGill statement letter is that you have a really tight restriction of 500 words, as opposed to other schools where I had like 10,000 characters sometimes. Um, so with 500 words, you have to do a lot. You have to essentially tell your whole story and you have to sell yourself as to why uh, you want to study law why you want to study law, particularly at McGill, and why they should choose you. And those were the three things that were actually told to me by an admissions uh, officer at McGill before applying. So those were the three questions I had in mind as I was writing. What I did to structure my statement letter was to kind of take a step back and think about at what point in my life I grew an interest in law. Even if I wasn't sure I wanted to be a lawyer, there was definitely certain issues that I felt were relevant to me and had led me towards the law. So I started by speaking about my personal experience um, being the child of immigrants in Canada. Both my parents are from Rwanda and we uh, had faced a genocide in 1994. So with that in mind, um, there was a lot of obviously consciousness of international law in our house uh, because it was so relevant to our personal history. And so growing up, that was always something that was present um, in terms of the kind of things I thought about and the type of societal issues I wanted to address. So I spoke a little bit about that. Um, I spoke about how that triggered my interest in sociology because I was able to answer or at least explore a lot of different sociological issues and conflicts that I had seen in the world. And then I use that to springboard into why I now want to study law. Um, once I did that, uh, I think one thing that's really important is to show that even if you want to study law, there's a particular reason why you want to study it at McGill. And I did mention the fact that they're known for their international, um, their reputation internationally. They're also a dual program, which allows me to work internationally. And they have specific uh, reports with the International Court of uh, Justice. Um, so those are all things that I thought were really interesting and I mentioned and um, I included in my statement letter. And then finally, 
using all that, I kind of tied it in to say, these are all the reasons why I'm interested in McGill and why I think I would participate in the McGill community and why you should choose me. And ultimately it worked out, obviously. Um, so I would say definitely just keep in mind those three questions and try to answer it as best as you can while still being true to yourself and talking about your own particular experience. Very cool. So what has your experience or your maybe I suspect your virtual experience been like so far in the in the program? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been interesting. Obviously, being first year law school remotely isn't ideal, um, but there's been a lot of efforts done by both the faculty and students in upper years to really try to welcome us on board. Um, so I've we had like a, a remote frosh week um, starting up, which was kind of nice. You still got to get to meet people in your same class. Professors have been really understanding and have uh, done a lot of accommodations to recognize the new remote situation we're in. Uh, so whether that's through providing recorded materials or perhaps um, having rotations where not everyone is showing their camera, it's just certain people at a time um, to allow for people's different home circumstances. Um, there's been a lot done to, to make sure that we feel comfortable and we're still integrated into the community. And uh, going into next year, they've also been consulting with us to see like how they can bring us back in in person. So there's definitely a commitment to uh, making us feel like we're part of the Miguel community and, and being really excited to welcome us in as we go. Um, and on the flip side, it's also been nice not having to go to class in a snowstorm. So that was kind of nice in winter semester. That's really, really great to hear. And then, yeah, so do you maybe have any like top tips that you would give for someone that is interested in McGill Law School? And is there anything else based on your experiences that you think would be useful to highlight for the viewers? Yeah, um, so I think for one, um, before applying to McGill, I think there are definitely some important considerations to keep in mind. For one, uh, you do have to be passively bilingual. So that means that you don't have to speak French, but you do need to understand it at least because we do have both English and French uh, courses as well as reading materials. And it can be very difficult if you don't have a good grasp of the language. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is because it's a dual program, it's three and a half years as opposed to three years. So it does push back your um, articling and your eligibility for the bar a little bit. Um, all that being said, I still think it's a great program and you do have a lot of uh, experience with legal clinics. Um, you can learn about Quebec culture if you're not from Quebec, which I have been doing. Um, you can also really improve your French, but you do have to keep in mind that if you're not looking to practice in French at all or you don't want to spend that extra time, it is something to keep in mind before uh, applying because um, a lot of people don't realize until afterwards and then it can be an issue. Um, in terms of just general applying to law school tips, I would say don't try to fit into what you think a law school admissions committee wants to see because obviously they see a lot of it and they see a lot of really common experiences. So you shouldn't ever downplay the things about you that make you different. Even if you think it might not be directly related to law, they are looking for that type of diversity and that type of uh, varied experience. So if you have like volunteer work that you think is completely irrelevant, you should still put it down. If you have a part time job in a fast food chain, you should still put that down because they're just looking to see you as a person and uh, you shouldn't try to fit some mold of what a law student is. I think they're really trying to diversify what law is and who is practicing it. Thank you so much, Beatrice, for, for taking the time and for your your really insightful advice for for students. You're welcome, it's been a pleasure. Have, have a great rest of the day. Thank you, same to you.